What's going on, YouTube? Uh, this is going to be another film review. And I've been really anticipating this film review because I really wanted to see this film. I'm a fan of the original Blade Runner. Um, I've watched it several times in my life. I'm a huge fan of Ridley Scott. So this film, I felt was necessary because I, I always wondered if they would do a sequel, how it would it turn out? And the sequel was directed by, um, let's see here, I can't, I remember his name, but, uh, I can't <laughs> remember off of my head. Uh, Dennis Vill Villanova, Villanueva, Villanueva, or Nevis, Nevin, I guess. Uh, we'll check into what he's done previously. And he, uh, from what I gather, um, his filmography is not too long. You know, he's he's, he's done some work in other stuff, but uh, let's see here. He did direct Arrival, which I haven't seen, actually. I haven't seen that film, but I did hear good things. And, uh, yeah, that's, you know, he's, uh, he, I, I remember... There's some other movies he's done, but I do remember hearing about Arrival. Uh, he's also done some documentaries, uh, some shorts, you know. Uh, so he he's a he's definitely a, a, a up and coming director. Um, when it comes to his 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 peak of his career, it's it should be around now, I would assume. Um, so anyway. Um, we, I'm definitely going to look forward to anything he does next. Um, that's something I can tell you about this film. Uh, is it up to the same par as the original? I think it's a little bit better only because the investment of technology. You know, this film is heavily about technology and the struggle with humanity when it comes to creating technology. Um, that is the forefront in the story, but it also tells, uh, you know, uh, it, it kind of tells, uh, Pinocchio story, you know, if you, if you, if you know Pinocchio, it kind of has that reference to it. They, they do reference it blatantly. It wasn't like, you know, hidden or anything like that, really. If you pay attention, you'll see it. Um, there is uh, also definitely the whole struggle with, like I said earlier, with humanity, with creating technology, how technology could be our, our, our downfall. And that, you know, you know, I, I don't want to spoil it too much for you, but there's, there's that going on for it. Um, there is, uh, definitely a very sim, uh, the cinematography and the CGI. It just blends together very well, just like the first one. Uh, I, like I said, when I came to the, the conclusion about advanced technologies, did make this film better um, because they do s s sort of uh, uh, see screens um, how I would picture the future to be. Um, the whole replicant stuff could be possible. Um, the, the you know uh, the 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 possibility of 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 a lot of things could be possible in this film and in this universe and in our own universe, uh, or what we call, you know, uh, base reality, uh, at nowadays, if you know what I'm talking about, um, in, in that regards, just, just say E M E. All right, man, just go down that rabbit hole and you will probably, uh, be obsessed for a few months or a year. Um, but definitely a film that I recommend if you guys go see it. How did I watch this? I watched it off of Blu-ray. Um, I, I, a, a friend of mine had a copy, and we and we watched it. Um, I really wanted to see this film in the theaters. I could actually still see it in the theaters at this point, but it, it was a film that I felt like I wanted to really enjoy. You know, in an intimate moment, you know, just watching it on my own or watching with a friend, and just talking about it afterwards. Um, Definitely a film that uh, I will probably watch again. Um, it, it's something that it was that good. Um, 
there were some plot holes. I, I mean, well, not plot holes. Some stuff that I didn't like about it was the the way the 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 I, not that Ryan Gosler wasn't a good actor and Harrison Ford, of course, you know, one of the best, but he, he seems like he's playing the same character in a lot of his films. It's just weird to me. But that's not taking a knock on his acting. It's just I think that whenever he's cast in a film, like purposely the writer <laughs> writes less dialogue for him. It, it I don't know if that's the, the case, but it just feels that way. And uh the the other thing that I wanted to, to point out a little bit about the film was that the whole dynamic with the um what's her name? Adam she's a looker. So to be honest with you, um, let me double check what her name is. Several um, female actresses are in this that are very uh, just eye candy. Uh, so let's just be honest here. Um, Anna Della Adams, uh, which is Joey. Man, was she beautiful? Um, and then there was uh, I think her name. I forget her name right now. There was another woman in there um, that was uh, kind of a love interest. And, yeah, the dynamic between those characters and uh, uh, Ryan Gasser's character named Kay, for short. But, you know, you learn another name from him later on. It's, it's, it was uh, very, yes, it was uh, kind of... Um, the word I'm looking for, um, you know, kind of a man's point of view of it. And that didn't hurt the film because the main character is a man. And it also, you know, I think it could be the way, other way around. It's just women don't want to admit that, that a, a film could focus too much on a woman's point of view of a film. Uh, but you know that's to be expected when the character is that is is mainly on focus. Um, yes, is is the machine, you know, programmed to feel you, you know, to 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 complace you. Um, yes, it could it could do that, but you don't know, you know, you don't know if a if a, a machine can grow or could simulate feelings. So if it could if it could even grasp how it feels to be human. How how is it to say that a machine can't form feelings? That's that's another thing. So that is a question in this film. Um, it, it's uh, it's definitely about artificial intelligence, and it's you know, and how that can grow, and how that can uh, uh, change the dynamics of of what we call consciousness, you know, and it's a good film. I really recommend it. If you like these type of films, they definitely are thinkers. They're thought provoking. They're, you know, there's something that you have to pay attention to, to really enjoy. Um, some films are very slow. Uh, like the first one was quite slow, but there is some good action in this. This one wraps the action a little bit more. Definitely has more of an action pace to it. Uh, the thing, also thing I didn't, I liked about this film, was that the whole, um, you know, the the CGI and the and the, and the stuff wasn't uh, overdone, in a way where it felt like they were trying to to grasp a more ambitious future look. You know what I'm saying? They were they were well enough to stay between the lines of it being not drastically different from which the original film was filmed in 1982. The new film, I mean, and, and it also, uh, what I meant to say, the old film, uh, the original film, it, I think, was set in 2020, something like that. So, or a few years after 2020. So not too far in the distant future. Um, you know, and it's funny that some of that stuff has happened in a way. It's not there yet. But I think in the next few few years we're gonna see similarities to the original Blade Runner, um, 
in a sense, in some of the ways, I'm not saying everything, but in, in some of the, the aspects of what it was, the visuals and how the future may be, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, that, that thing. Um, so, I, I, you know, what else can I say? I don't want to make this video too long. It's gone longer than I thought. Um, but it was a lot to talk about. I was comparing the original to the uh, to the sequel, and the sequel is just as good. I think the sequel could it, it, over time it could get, be even better. But uh, honestly, the original uh, um, was something dated. It is dated at this point because when you see it, you see some things that you thought could have. At least when you see it now, you, oh, they could have you know simulated a, a cell phone aspect of things. Or, you know, they were they were saying the talking thing and then the computer was, you know, there were certain things that, of course, at that time you couldn't really um, produce because of technology. But I think both films will have a long lasting effect in sci-fi films. I think they have a definite um, thing that they're going to, that a lot of filmmakers are going to look back on and, and just study. Um, it does have uh what else does it have kind of has uh what else i was trying to i was trying to get here there was something else i was going to mention but i forgot <laughs> right now i was going to mention something uh you know it just feels like those dark neo films that you enjoy like the matrix the you know the list goes on and on any of those type of films that you can fall into the same category as the matrix that's what this film is and it probably inspired a lot of that so you know you could you could see that uh, of course it, uh ghost in the shell you can mention that one as well the live action and the, the the anime which the anime is way better to be honest i haven't st i still haven't seen the original i mean the uh the live take of waiver scarlet johansson i still haven't seen that one i need to actually watch that and you know th th that's pretty much um, people that, that know me personally, I do enjoy these type of films. I enjoy sci-fi tremendously. So I'm a little biased in a sense. Um, I enjoy horror too. I enjoy a, a lot of horror. There's some films that are so bad that they're good. And even in sci-fi, the same thing. There's some bad, there's some films that are so bad that they're, you know, they're kind of good. You know, it's, it's weird to, to say, but it's true. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, uh, what I would give this, they're giving it an 8.2 uh, out of 10. Uh, I would say, yeah, I would say an 8. I don't want to give it too much because honestly, I think that if I see it again, I'll, I'll catch more mistakes or like, you know, a few times because it is a film I'm going to watch again. I've watched Blade Runner so many times, the original and the Blade Runner. 2049 is probably going to be another one of those films that I watch again. I think it was a good made sequel. Uh, definitely uh, looking forward to more follow-ups to this. Uh, probably in a few years, man. I could wait another 10 years to see another sequel to this. Or 5 years or 3 years. It just depends if it's done right. You know what I'm saying? It's It has to be done right. That's it, really. So uh, I'll see you guys later. Hope you enjoyed the review. I know it's longer than it was supposed to, but hey, lot to talk about, lot to give. And there's even things that I wanted to say, and I just drew a blank. Uh, I, I was kind of rehearsing this, and I just didn't say what I was supposed to say. I, I'm going to uh, kick myself later on after this video is finished. And uh, yeah, that's, a, that's about it. That's all I can really uh, say. Um, go check it out. Really recommend it. Hopefully it gets an Academy Award for something. Uh, or not. Or at least be nominated. It, it could be nominated for sure. I, if I, it's not nominated, I'll be a little disappointed. So uh, I'll see you guys later.